Ford has introduced a new Ranger, but maybe more importantly, there's also a new Ranger Raptor. And after being denied the previous version, North America, we finally get it. Now, Kyle's already had some seat time with this and has extensively tested it off-road. If you want to read about that, click on the link below. So since we know it can off-road, which it's a Raptor, of course it can, I'm going to see what it's like to live with day to day. Doing things like going to the grocery store, picking up the kids from school, commuting to work, all those sort of things. I want to see if this is a dual purpose truck or more of an off-road special like the Jeep Gladiator Mojave. So let's get this off the dirt and onto the pavement. That doesn't sound right for a Raptor, but I guess that's what we're going to do. Being all new, of course there's a new look, but it still has a lot of familiar Ford truck styling. The old Ranger was really European inspired and it always felt a little narrow and tall looking, whereas the proportions of this new one are much better. It has more of a wider squared off look to it. Being the Raptor, there's also some nice details like the giant Ford on the grill, Raptor badges everywhere, and this one also has the Raptor graphics package, which I'm a little torn about. I personally wouldn't put it on my car, but I get the appeal on the Raptor. Like this is a big flashy truck, so why not go all in? Finally, on the outside, there are those optional 17 inch wheels, which are bead lock capable. And I think it just kind of adds to the, the rugged utilitarian image of the Raptor. The interior of the Ranger Raptor is more, let's say, designed for use rather than style. I mean, it looks pretty nice and it looks very modern with the big vertical screen and the fully digital information center. And the Ranger adds some nice touches like the orange trim bits and the orange on the seat and the Raptor branding. But otherwise, it's just sort of a mid-sized pickup in here. It's, it's not offensive, but it's not special. It's just a truck. This is what it's supposed to do. I do command Ford for keeping the hard buttons for the climate control. That is a huge plus, and I wish everyone would do that, and maybe they will one day, but that's a rant for another time. All right, let's talk comfort. The front seats are pretty supportive. Uh, I'm quite a fan, and the armrests are at the right spots and are quite well padded. There's a ton of headroom, like a seven footer could probably sit behind the wheel here and drive. And that headroom continues into the rear seats. Legroom's pretty good back there too, so adults will fit, probably two, not three. And they probably won't want to be there long term. There's a lot of adjustable settings in the vehicle too. There's like seven or eight drive modes. You can change the exhaust, the suspension, the steering. If you keep the suspension in normal, the exhaust on quiet and the steering on comfort, it's fairly livable for an off-road purpose truck. They've done a good job of making this decent on the street as well. I've driven some other off-road trucks that are noisier, clunkier, and, and all the controls are just harder to use. And that refinement's also felt in the suspension. It's pretty well tuned. A lot of pickups can get jittery on broken roads, especially the rear end, and here the, the dampening seems to take care of that. I mean, it still does drive like a truck and it's not going to be as comfortable as a car or SUV, but again, for something that's really designed to bomb off-road, it's pretty well done. Now, one of the things I don't like, the first one has to do with the rear seats. They flip up like they do in most trucks, but there's no 60-40 split on the flip up. And when you do flip them up, there's really no storage underneath. It's so tiny, like there's no real point in being able to do that. So that really takes away from the ability to use this truck with four people and some cargo that you don't want to put in the bed. The infotainment screen, although I praised having the climate control buttons, there's not a lot of controls for the radio. Um, the screen's so big, like cut off an inch or two and give me some more controls. Oh, one more cool thing I want to point out is there's six auxiliary toggles here on the roof. So it's pretty cool because that allows you to put a lot of different stuff on the truck and you don't have to mess up the dashboard when you wire them. They can go right into these switches that are already ready to go. Handling, well, it's not really fair to attack this truck because that's not what it was designed for. Let's just leave it at, it's what you'd expect and don't think you're overtaking a, a three series in a corner. So part of what makes a Raptor a Raptor lies under the hood. Here we have a three liter turbocharged V6 that in this truck makes 405 horsepower and 430 pound feet of torque. That's a good chunk of power for a 5,300 pound truck. And most of the time it, it feels like it. Uh, off the line, um, certain highway passing maneuvers, you, know, you can really feel all that sort of torque and power rush on. But at other times, I don't know if I'm catching out the 10 speed automatic or the engine wasn't ready to spool up, but it, it feels like you're, you're missing 100 horsepower. It's not often, but I have felt it every once in a while.
So that brings me to probably the thing I like the least about the Raptor, and that's the engine sound. Of course, this wasn't going to sound like a big, meaty V8, nor was it going to be like a, an inline six, but the V6 just sounds... Uh... Here, I'll give you a demonstration. Just kind of has this weird drone to it. I don't know. Maybe you like it. I'm not a huge fan. Now, one nice thing is it is possible to change the amount of volume with a button on the steering wheel that can go from quiet to normal to sport to Baja. Baja is designed only for off-road use, the truck keeps telling me, and I don't really hear much of a difference between it and sport, but I'm sure there is. Noises I do like, the turbo makes some cool noises. I just really wish the three liters exhaust and muffler system was tuned a bit, because it is possible to do that to get a different kind of sound. And of course, being a truck, I have two wheel drive, four wheel auto, four wheel high, four wheel low. There's tow mode, there's rock haul mode, Baja mode. There's just tons of stuff that this truck can do, which uh, Kyle got to do and I didn't. So since I'm doing the on-road review, let's stick to the on-road mode. So I didn't get to tow anything, so I can't really speak to that mode. And well, it's not snowing here in summer, so I can't really talk about slippery mode and normal mode is surprise, surprise, normal. So let's talk about the sport mode. So selecting sport automatically puts steering to sport, exhaust to sport, and a suspension to sport. It will hold gears a little longer when you're driving. And when you come to a stop, it will downshift and blip the throttle a bit, no matter how light or hard you're downshifting. So it gives you sort of a little more feel. It doesn't exactly make the truck sporty because it's not. It's powerful and cool, but it's sporty, it's not. But you know, it, it just might engage the driver a little bit more, or maybe they're going through some mountain passes and they want those gears held a little longer or downshifted a little quicker. Because this is an off-roader, the suspension's tuned a little softer, and when you put it into the actual off-road road, it gets really soft. And if you're leaving from a stop, you can feel the whole truck kind of lift up an inch and go forward. As I said at the start of the video, the Bronco Raptor is fully capable off-road. It can hold its own with its larger siblings, the Bronco Raptor and the F-150 Raptor. However, it doesn't feel quite as special as those two. It's like an ingredient was left off the list when they made this vehicle. But, and this is a huge but, there's a massive price advantage on this vehicle over the Bronco and the F-150. So if you're just looking to get into the Raptor family, here's your choice. But let's get back to what this video is really about, and that's how is the Ford Ranger Raptor to live with day to day? Well, I have to say, I was both surprised and impressed with this on-road behavior. It gives you sort of a full-size truck feel and a slightly shrunken package. Not all mid-size trucks do that. And it also has more of a dual purpose than some other off-road specials like the Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. Is it perfect? Well, no, there's some stuff in the interior I'd change and we have to do something about that engine sound. But overall, it's a well-put-together truck that can also off-road.